Hey there humans and fur babies, I'm Michael and welcome to Inside the Round, the channel where I create, upcycle and recycle in the hope to inspire you to do the same. In today's video I'm going to tackle a problem in my bathroom. At the moment I've got bottles and bits and pieces strewn all over the top of my bench and it's messy and it doesn't look great. I need a tray to put everything in. If you live in a big city, you'd probably go down to the dollar store, Target, Pottery Barn, Anthropology or something and buy something amazing. But I don't live in a big city. I live in Bali, a little island in Indonesia, which is amazing and I absolutely love it. But all the product here has sort of got the same look and feel, which is not necessarily my look and feel. So when I need something, I create it. So in today's video, I'm going to turn a cake tin, a broken fan and two beer cans into a kick-ass tray for my bathroom. If that interests you, then keep on watching. Today's creation is inspired by steampunk. So what is steampunk? Steampunk is inspired by the Industrial Revolution in Europe in the 19th century and the Victorian era's romantic view of science. In product design, it's reignited materials like brass, copper, wood, glass and mechanical workings, influencing film, fashion, cosplay, interior design and product design. Think films like Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland, Mad Max, and you begin to understand the aesthetic of steampunk. Let's get started. First, let's start putting our flourishes on the cake tin. Take your beer can, I used 500 ml, I think I ended up using two, so have two beers and keep the cans and cut it open. Essentially what we're trying to do is get a sheet of aluminium to use to fold and make strips that are going to go around the top and the corners of the cake tin. I needed 20 centimetres to wrap around the top of my cake tin and I needed a finished height of 15 millimetres. I ended up cutting the aluminium at 25 millimetres so then I had a five millimeter turnover on the top and the bottom to give it a clean finish. I cut four of these strips and then I moved on to the corner panels. Again, I kept five millimeters either side, so I ended up cutting these at four centimeters with a five millimeter turnover on either edge. I kept a little extra at the bottom to fold up so I had a clean edge on the bottom also. I used a two-part epoxy to attach these to the tin because I thought it was going to be stronger than using hot glue or something. Once I'd pre-folded and attached these onto the corners, I taped the whole thing around to secure it and let it cure overnight. Next, we're going to add the strips to the top. I used pegs this time to secure it because the tape was okay but not amazing. So yeah, I used the pegs around the top and let that cure overnight. Once all of the aluminium pieces have been attached and have cured, then we're going to start giving it a bit of texture. I used a nail and a hammer just to go around and create some pretend rivets around the edges of the aluminium. Next, I used a drill and drilled holes into all the corners of the aluminium and used a rivet to give it more of an industrial look. I generally don't like to throw things away, not that I'm a hoarder, I just don't like adding trash into the earth. So if there's something that I don't know how to recycle, I usually keep it and try and upcycle it somehow. And this is where my broken electric fan came in. I'm not an electrician, so I don't know how to fix electrical stuff, but I know how to take stuff apart. So I took apart this desk fan and once I opened the guts of it, inside there was all great little cogs and bits and pieces that I, you know, disassembled and I ended up having all these awesome things to use for this project. I've got a bowl full of the bits and pieces from the fan, I've got a bowl of all the upcuts off the beer can, I've got a bowl full of random bolts and screws and nails. So now we get to play with the positioning of where all these cool things are going to work on the tin. Look at the four sides and work out which one is going to be your face. Which one is the one you're going to see when you walk into the bathroom or walk into your house or whatever. That's kind of going to be the fanciest one that you're going to do. I'm not going to lie, this takes a little while but it's also the funnest part. Working out what bits look good together, how to use other little offcuts here and there. Don't throw stuff away, even when you're cutting up the aluminium cans, keep leftovers because you might end up using it for something else. A couple of the pieces that I had had a logo on them which I didn't want so I've sanded those off which wasn't the easiest thing to do but I think it made a difference in the end. I found another part in the fan that I'd sort of 
didn't know what to do with, but I'd end up fitting in really perfectly on this side. I cut off some of the bits, sanded them down a bit, tried it with a bolt, tried it with a screw, and it ended up looking quite cool. Once you're happy with the design, I again use the two-part epoxy to attach these, to make them super secure. And also because we're mixing metals and plastic and wood, this is gonna really hold it firm on the tin. For the other side, which is not gonna be as noticeable, I just put an extra little strip of the aluminium and did the rivet detail around it and added some screws that I'd chopped off. I didn't need the screwy bit, I just needed the cool toppy bit. So I glued those on. Once everything's cured and dried and it's looking kind of random, you might want to go off and clean off some of the epoxy that might have leaked. I had to use an X-Acto knife for this because the nail varnish didn't really work. Then once it's all done, clean it all with a clean brush and some nail polish remover to get off any excess dust. Now because we've used so many different elements, plastic, metal, wood, etc., we need to give the whole thing a uniform prime using a primer paint so all the surfaces are going to take the actual paint we're going to use when we decide the colour we're going to use. So I found this matte black primer that is good for plastic, wood and metal so that way it's going to coat everything and make everything pretty much a uniform surface. So I gave the whole tin inside and out two coats of the primer and let it dry overnight. And this is how it looks. Already I think it's looking amazing. You can see that now that everything's a uniform colour, it's all sort of starting to come together. Now, as I mentioned, Steampunk has copper and brass, so I found this gold spray, which is not super gold. It more ends up being coppery. I've used it on something else before. So I gave the whole tin again two coats inside and out. Just make sure when you're spraying you do light coats back and forth about six to eight inches away so we don't get any dribbles and it gets a nice even coat. And voila, this is how we're looking. Now, it's a little bit shiny. I was tossing up whether I used a glossy varnish to finish it or a matte varnish to finish it. And I think now seeing the difference between the black matte and the gold glossy, I'm definitely gonna go with a matte varnish. But now we gotta antique this baby. So get yourself some black enamel paint. You have to use enamel because the paint that we used before was enamel. So you need to use enamel on enamel, otherwise it's not gonna stick. So this is a black enamel paint. Get yourself some paper because we want to try and do a little bit of dry brushing. Dip your paintbrush into the black enamel and just take off a little bit of the excess. Make sure when you're painting onto the cogs and thing you get right into the little details where most of the kind of patina and rust is going to form because it's kind of hidden, it's not as, as exposed wall, it's not going to get rubbed. Now this was a bit of a trial and error situation. I did try and brush it off with an old t-shirt, that didn't work and trying to dab it on with a paper towel didn't work. So you're just gonna to have to play around with the dry brush uh, until you get the desired effect. Okay, this is looking great. Very shiny, but great. This ended up taking more like 48 hours to dry. I think because it was the enamel on the enamel, it just took a little bit longer to dry. But now we're done, I'm gonna give it two final coats of the clear matte enamel and see how we are. And there you have it guys, I hope you loved today's creation. If you want to see more images and close up pics, head on over to Inside the Round on Instagram. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe and click the, <laughs> click the notification bell. Click the notification bell.